Okay, today's video, I'm going to show you how to build exactly this drone. This is the Shen Drone Squirt. It's my favorite Cine Whoop, and it's like pretty much biggest. Like, I fly this thing for work more often than I fly anything else. This is an amazing cinematic tool. I've talked about it. I've blah, blah, blah. Like, if you want to learn more about the Squirt itself, we can go figure that out later. But for now, we're going to jump into a full build guide. Every single step is in here. Links are in the description, all that stuff. Um, come check it out if you want to learn how to build this. If you find this content useful, please consider subscribing, uh, ring that notification bell, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Um, it helps me immeasurably, uh, and I'm sure you're gonna be excited to see more content just like this. So thank you very much for subscribing and all that stuff. Here goes the video. Okay, today I'm going to show you how to build a Cine Whoop. Um, more specifically, this Cine Whoop is the Shen Drone Squirt. Uh, this frame here is the squirt. We got our ducks here, the frame. Um, and then we also have uh, our top plate for the frame, our GoPro camera mount uh, for it, and then miscellaneous hardware throughout. Um, and that's so we're going to be assembling the, the Shen Drone Squirt. I'll show you each of the individual components that we've got on here. Um, and tell you a little bit about each of them. Um, I'm going to try to give you just enough that you're kind of drinking from a fire hose. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of information that I'm going to try to throw at you, and I'm going to just say a lot of different things so that you have uh, the right tools to kind of Google um, and learn more about each of them. So at least you have the kind of sense of, you know, where you're heading with each of them. Um, and hopefully that will kind of at least get you started down your path of building drones. <clears throat> um, so to start, we'll talk about the frame. Um, so this is the, the squirt frame. Uh, this is the main plate on the frame. The, uh, it's all carbon fiber. It's a single plate unibody. Um, and we're going to mount all of our hardware onto this uh, component. Um, so we'll set this aside for now. Um, you're going to use, I'm going to refer to these guys as standoffs. Um, they're going to be part of the main body. Um, as well as, you know, there's a whole bunch of them. So all of these are basically, you're going to uh, attach them directly to the frame and it's going to, that's what's going to make the, the structure of it come together. <clears throat> um, these are ducts. These are 3D printed. Uh, mine's are, mine are a little loved. Um, I had to reuse some for this build, but uh, they trust me, they're fine. Um, these ducts uh, basically accelerate air in over the these uh, airfoil design and what that does is it helps increase the power output of the motor and the prop combination inside of the duct and pushes it through but it also has the added benefit of it being kind of squishy and, and it helps be able to fly near people um, so it actually is a is a safety factor as well so these are um, really really perfect for uh, cine whoops for being able to fly inside for flying close to people so those are the ducts um, you got one plate here for the back, um, again, slightly loved. Uh, this is where the uh, DJI air unit is going to mount. It's going to just sit in this piece. Um, and also for the frame, your top plate and your GoPro camera mount. Um, this one, I believe, is designed for the GoPro Hero 8. What else? Okay, so let's talk about motors. So these are the motors that we're using uh, for this build. These are the ones that I chose are the uh, Hobby Wing 1408-3750 KV motor. Um, basically, the 1408 refers to the width and height of the stator. Okay, so for each motor, for any motor, a brushless uh, or any brushless electric motor. There's two parts to it. There's the stator and the bell. The stator is the part that is fixed, is not spinning. And the part that is spinning is the bell. Um, and these numbers, the top numbers, are measurements of the... Um, these top numbers are measurements of the bell. Sorry, of the stator. And so the 14 is the width of from... Uh, uh, from, the, from one side to the other. And then the, the 08 is the height. Um, so like on a, in, in those will change based on the type of prop you have. So because we're using a relatively small prop, we're also using a relatively small motor and that's going to be the best balance of weight and thrust. Um, but if you, for example, on a five inch racing drone, like a freestyle drone, you're going to bump this up to like a 22 width and then an 07 height. So a little bit wider, but not as tall. 
um, and then you add a bigger prop. And so the, the, those kinds of things change all the time. Um, and then the other number is the 3750 kV. Um, the kV stands for revolutions per volt per minute. So um, at and this drone is built to be a four cell racing drone. It's going to, or I guess any drone, and it's going to have a four cell battery, which operates at a voltage of 16.8 volts. So at max load, this, this motor is going to spin at, um, 3750 times 16.8. And that gives you the RPM per minute. So, well, RPM per minute. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so that's just a, it's basically just a measurement of how fast the motor spins, um, when it's under load or when it's not under load, excuse me. Um, and that also will help you determine what type of prop you're going to use. So on a 37 KV motor, um, the largest you would probably want to run is three, uh, three inch props or smaller. Um, and then, you know, on a, on a, on four cell that is, but then for four cell for like a five inch prop, you would run it to be something like 2300 or 2600 KV. Um, so again, just throwing as much information as at you as I can so that you can kind of search up all of this information later, but hobby wing 1408, 3750 KV motors. I'll probably list a different motor than this one. Um, because there's a lot that are very similar and some that have come out that are even better for Cine whoops, but this is a great motor as well. <clears throat> Next, we'll talk about your flight controller. Uh, so this is the flight controller that we're using is the Newbie Drone, New B, like a newbie, Drone Infinity FC200. Um, we're using the Infinity stack, so it actually comes with a speed controller or flight controller and a speed controller. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, I chose this uh, flight controller because it has a built-in uh, regulator for the DJI FPV air unit. And it also has a plug that goes directly from this to the air unit. Uh, so we don't have to solder the air unit to it. In addition, the two um, flight controller and the speed controller are going to have a cable that will run between them. Um, and so you don't have to solder anything between the two of those too. So that's why I chose the stack. Um, so we'll set the flight controller down and talk about the speed controller. The speed controller is what um, controls the well the speed of the motors. Um, it will ha we will solder all of the motors directly to each of these pads here on the side, um, and then this is going to take the DC voltage from the battery. It's going to run it into the speed controller. The speed controller will then talk to the flight controller and it will share information about how fast each motor is going, how fast each motor is supposed to go. And then it's going to control the speed of those motors based on commands from the flight controller. So you can think of the circuit as battery goes into here. The communication goes up to the flight controller. The flight controller says, Hey, spin this motor this fast that goes back to the ESC. And then the ESC pushes out AC current to each motor. So this is a speed controller. Um, two more notes about flight controllers and speed controllers. So f on, on f well, it's especially about flight controllers. Flight controllers have different firmware. So there's three major firmware in the uh, FPV community right now. There's Betaflight, KISS, and Flight One. Uh, this particular flight controller uses Betaflight, um, but KISS and Flight One are limited to which hardwares they can use, and this one is not supported by one of those. But Betaflight is, they're all great. You know, it's kind of Android versus iOS, da 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 da, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, I choose Betaflight stuff typically. Next up, we'll talk about the uh, DJI FPV air unit. Um, this is just in a, a camera mount, so you don't need to worry about that. But essentially, all this is, is or this is both the control, um, so our, our, our radio um, is going to communicate with this thing, and it's also our video. So the camera here is going to send video back through this to the goggles that you're wearing so you can see from the perspective of the drone. Um, the DJI FPV air unit is a super solid choice for, um, anybody that's doing freestyle or cine or, um, anything like that. Uh, some people like it for racing. I don't personally, uh, but it's, uh, it's a perfect solution for cine whooping, especially because you're flying low, slow, close proximity sort of stuff. So you can really see what's going on around you. Um, and then, like I said, there's one cable that you'll have here that plugs in the back of the flight or the air unit 
and then this cable is going to plug directly into the flight controller. So it's super convenient to assemble. Um, and that's one of the, another one of the reasons that I, I love this system. So yeah, so then there's just a bunch of miscellaneous little connectors and stuff, bits and bobs that I'll show you um, as we go. All of the links for everything here is in the description and uh, they're all affiliate links as well. So if you choose to support this channel and making more videos like this, please consider using those links. Um, I might throw a few alternatives for each in case something's out of stock or whatever. But uh, yeah, so this is all the stuff you need to build um, a Shendron Squirt. So really quick, I just want to go through the tools that we're going to be using for this build. So first of all is a two millimeter um, uh, hex driver. Uh, it's going to be used for like pushing the, the flight controller standoffs and all that kind of stuff on. Um, I've got some uh, angle cutters. These are going to be used to strip wires, cut wires, all that stuff. We've got solder, um, obviously important for soldering. We've got a soldering tool. Um, this is my uh, TS-100. Easily my favorite soldering iron of all time. Great price, run it off a battery, um, use it in the field, whatever you need. Um, prop tool for tightening the nuts on top of the, the prop or on the motor. This is a 5.5 U blocks. Um, this is uh, used to push down little nuts like this um, onto standoffs. Extremely important. I use tweezers, um, or in my case, I use alligator forceps. Um, these just allow me to hold the motor like wires when I'm soldering without like um, burning my hands. Um, I keep a exacto knife um, and then also a 1.5 millimeter um, driver. This is going to be used for the camera screws. So that's the full gamut of tools that we've got for this build. Um, uh, in addition, got a little bit of uh, 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 brass wool to, to clean off the tip of my soldering iron. And and sometimes I'll often have gaff tape to secure like the motor wires to the frame or something like that. So that's the full gambit of all the tools we're using. If you have all of these, you have everything you need to build a drone. All right, so first off, let's start with the frame. So like I said, this is the Shen Drone Squirt and we're gonna put first our big standoffs on. I've got one that doesn't match, um, so you can just ignore that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I've got my one, two, three, four tall standoffs and one, two, three, four screws. You can tell which is the front by looking at screw holes. Uh, so the front one it has the uh, flight controller closest to the front um, because the air unit is gonna be sitting in the back kind of like this. And so you need to have the flight controller and everything pushed up away from it. Okay, with those four on, then you can do the little ones. They're gonna go all on the outside of the frame. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So now you've got all six standoffs put on the sides. You got four in the middle. Um, and the place that I usually go to next is to put the motors on. So you've got your, your motors will come with uh, four screws that look like this. I'm only using three on each because I'm, again, recycling parts here. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll have four in your kit. And also, you'll see some like little, uh, it's really embarrassing, but some little washers in there. Um, and that's only because I have too long of screws and I'm just running short. So just ignore those and pretend that that didn't happen. Okay, all four motors are on now. And that means we can get the speed controller on. So each of these motors, motor wires have to solder onto the pads on the electronic speed controller. Um, that's probably the most daunting task for newcomers, uh, but that's okay because it's pretty easy. And I will show you how to do it now. All right, so we're gonna grab our speed controller. The speed controller goes on kind of like what looks like upside down. So, no, it goes on this way, right side up. <laughs> Duh. <clears throat> so, because we're using 20 by 20, we just need some 20 by 20 hardware. 
So the only downside that I've found so far about using the newbie drone stack with this is that it's designed for uh, this is M. These are M2 screws, which are pretty big. They fit great in these holes, um, but on the squirt, these are designed for 1.5 mil. Um, I found that you can just force it um, or use like a file to kind of make the hole a little bit bigger or drill it out. Um, but for me, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, chuck this bit here in my... And just run it on through. That's not going to have any impact on performance or anything like that. It's just the way it's going to be. A little inconvenient there. Um, and if you just use a driver, you can you can do it on your without a screwdriver or anything like that. It will still work. Um, and the fact that they're just in there solid is not a bad thing. It just is like that. So then in order to protect the speed controller, you want to put these uh, plastic spacers at the bottom. Um, and they're going to just sit between the, the carbon fiber and the speed controller. Um, and then just use your 5.5. This uh, flight controller and speed controller stack comes with all of this hardware, so you don't need to get anything special or anything extra. It all comes in the package so that you can install it one-to-one. -one. So we've got our standoffs installed. Uh, we've got the screws down at the bottom to protect uh, the flight controller from touching the carbon. And then we're going to set the, or sorry, the speed controller. And then we're going to set the speed controller down in on our standoffs. Just be careful not to push out the gummies. Good times. Yeah. Now you can see that there's a little extra space between the speed controller here and the carbon fiber underneath so that it's not going to be touching down or anything like that. And then once we put the flight controller on, which we'll put some standoffs in there as well, you can also see that there will be plenty of space for that one as well. Again, just in the the purpose of dry fitting is to make sure that everything is going to fit in place. This is the uh, 3D printed uh, holder for the air unit. I just wanted to put it on, make sure that we're going to have enough space for the battery, which we definitely will. Um, so just always checking, making sure that before you really assemble anything, there's going to be any issues. All right, so to do the soldering here, you can do all 14, you only have to do 14, is that right? Yeah, 14 pads um, to get this thing built. So the first thing we're going to do when it comes to soldering is uh, tin each of the pads. So tinning is just the act of getting some solder onto the pads. It makes it a lot easier to solder it. Um, and I'm just taking it, applying heat to the pad and to the uh, solder at the same time. And you can see that it just sticks right on there, each each joint. Um, I know soldering can be intimidating, um, but I'll put links in the, uh, the video on learning how to solder well. And uh, there's like little tools that you can buy to practice soldering, so you're not destroying anything. Um, that all th it's all in there, in the description over on the web page, so you don't have to worry. It's all we got you. Okay, all those are done, and then there's only two left, and those are the two here on the back for the battery. One on this side, and one on this side. So I'll install the battery lead right now. Um, so because of the way that this fr frame works, the, these pads are kind of in the middle, so you kind of want the battery uh, to come out the side a little bit. So what we're going to do is just kind of dry fit, measure like... I want it to. I want it basically to do that when it's coming out. Let me zoom this out a little bit, um, so that the uh, this goes backwards into into the battery plug. Um, so I'm going to cut these wires to be mount, mounted sideways like that. So I'm going to cut the positive one there and the negative one a little shorter there. 
So now once I solder them on, it's going to fit across like that, but then the wires are still roughly the, the same amount of run. So we'll cut. So then we're going to strip the wire back a little bit, um, just trying to expose some of the um, wiring underneath the protective sheath, just like that. And then we're going to tin the wire. Um, both the wire and the solder at the same time and you're just trying to get it nice and prepped. I had a little too much coffee this morning so I'm all over the place. Okay. Try not to breathe in the fumes. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna solder the negative one first. It doesn't matter which order you do it. It's just gonna be a convenience factor for me. So I'm just gonna apply heat to both the pad and the wire at the same time. Add a little more solder in there. There you go. Put a little more on this pad. Okay. So now the wires are coming out the side on purpose because it's going to come up and out and back to the battery like that. Um, and then the sheath on the wire is protecting the other wire from it uh, getting on there and making a short. Um, I'm going to really quick put some more uh, plastic standoffs just to hold the speed controller in place. Okay, now we can do each of our motors. So with the motors, um, you can run the wires as long or as short as you want. I like to try to keep it somewhat clean. Um, so I'm going to cut the wires to the length that I need to fit this thing. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it with my hand here, trying to get roughly the right length. Um, so you can kind of see that I'm just eyeballing the right length and I'm just going to cut all the wires to the same length. Oops. I'm going to do the same for each. I like that length already. I like that length already. And then on this one, I'm going to shorten it up a little bit. Uh, these ones are tinned already because I took them off of a build. And then I'm going to go ahead and strip these ones. I can get all three of them at the same time usually, just to save time. You don't have to. Just try to keep them all roughly the same amount of exposure. Point them up, and then we're going to tin each of those. No. Nope. Okay, and then once we've done all that, we can then solder all these motor wires directly onto the flight con or speed controller. Get my tweezers here, and I just r run them all straight down the row. And boom, all soldering done for this build. Not so bad, right? Um, give the motors a quick spin, make sure that they all freely spin. If they don't, you might have a short here um, or underneath. Um, it's called FET drag, that's the term for it. So the little, um, you can see the little black things in there. Um, those are a component that is on the speed controller called a FET, an F-E-T. Um, and when those are what basically give power to the motors, 
Um, and so if you bridge two of these pads here, and you don't really need to do this ever, so I'm just using solder and I'm pushing my finger against it to hold it locked. Oh, if I can get it. So I'm holding solder on this motor's pad here. And you can see it doesn't spin, but if I take it off, it spins a lot more. So that is basically how you can tell if you have a short or not. Okay, next up, we're gonna connect, or I'm gonna put the air unit in. Um, so there's, it comes, the squirt comes with this little canopy. You can just see that there's screws that go straight into the camera like that. Maybe you can't see. So you just have to put the camera in the mount. Um, the chin side, like so when it lays on the table like this, is the flat side, or is the downside. So like you can see that there's, um, if I put like a flat surface in here, it's gonna have a little bit of up tilt, but if you put it the other way, it's looking down. Um, so there's a flat surface and that's gonna be how you choose which way is up. Uh, but it doesn't matter because with the DJI system, you can actually flip the camera upside down um, really easily. <clears throat> so we're putting this in because I want to put this wire underneath the flight controller, um, or between the flight controller and the speed controller. And I just don't want to uh, have to take off the flight controller, put that back on, and then da 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 da, -da. The newbie drone comes with these tiny little cables. I'm just going to use that one because we can... Basically, just I'm gonna plug this in here right now, just to make sure that it's there and ready for me. And then the um, air unit just rests either way. Um, I like the SD card side up because if I ever want to use the SD card, it won't fall out the bottom, for example. And then the camera sets down just like that. So you got a little extra wire here, which is fine. Um, just kind of move it out of the way. <clears throat> then take your flight controller. And you can see that the big plug is the one that... I'm going to go ahead and install the flight controller upside down because I prefer having these connectors on top. Just slide it on. And then take two more of your... or four more of your plastic standoffs or spacers, or nuts, or whatever. Don't squeeze so hard that you squish the gummies. You just want it to be sitting in place. It doesn't have to be really clamped down or anything, um, but you also want it to have some free movement as well. Um, that's the whole point of the gummy system, is to get it to kind of, you can see it shakes around just a little bit. That's probably a little too tight. So you can see that there's just enough space between the flight controller and the ESC. Um, but everything is locked in place. Nice. And then your final step for this build is you need to connect the air unit and the flight controller. Um, and all you have to do is plug in the cable into the back of the air unit. Boink. And then plug the cable into the back of the flight controller. You boink. And that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and just spin this a couple times to get it a little bit cleaner. Plug it in. Put it into rest. This little spot. And shaboom. That is a fully built drone. <clears throat> Spin that around. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the little antenna holder just to keep these antennas kind of situated. Um, but we're going to have to take that off again in a bit. So for the first plug-in, you really want to use something called a smoke stopper. I don't have one. I use my power supply upstairs, which kind of acts, acts as the same way. 
Um, but we, what it does basically is it sits between your battery and the, the drone, and if something is shorting out and something could blow up, uh, it will uh, prevent that from happening. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna plug it straight in and we'll see that uh, the drone powers up. Don't worry about the tones all sounding different. Um, and then I'm gonna take this opportunity to bind the uh, drone to my DJI radio. And my goggles. So the first step, and it's kind of uh, unfortunate because this one's already bound to this, but we'll just go ahead and go through the process anyway. Um, so you want to power all three things on. On the air unit, there's this little button here. You got to get something pointy, like my Exacto knife. Go in there, click it. This light turns red. I don't know if you can see that it's red. And then you go onto your goggles, mm -hmm. and right next to the mm -hmm. power connector, right here. Zoom in. Right here, there's a little button that you can press. And that double beep means that it's bound. So if you look in the goggles, you'll see that it's there is video. I'll try to wiggle my fingers in front there, you can see. <clears throat> and then for the radio, you push the button again on the drone, and then go over to the radio, and you hit the, re there's a record button here the nameless button here on the plate and the scroll wheel all in at the same time. It'll beep a couple times and then it will go green again. So now this is green here and this is green here. So that's all there is to uh, binding that all up. Um, the next thing you want to do is with your goggles go into the menus and I can't really show you this very easily um, and go into settings then go all the way to device and make sure that the protocol is set to SBUS VOD fast. So that's a fully built drone um, where you have to do some software work on it first. So I don't put the ducts on yet because uh, it's really hard to get a USB in there um, once the ducts are on. Uh, so let's take a break from uh, working on this uh, here and start uh, doing the software for it. Okay, so I've got my computer here, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in the drone. So this is just USB mini, right into the flight controller there. And you need two programs uh, on the computer uh, to do drone work. Uh, for especially for this flight controller because it uses Betaflight, um, we need Betaflight, um, the Betaflight configurator. If you search that, you can find it. Um, and then you also need uh, BL Heli 32, BL Heli Suite 32. Um, they make a version for OS X as well as Windows and I think even Linux. Um, and so we'll go ahead and connect to the flight controller. And the first thing I want to start with is my motor orientation. Make sure all the motors are spinning the proper direction. So what you do is go to the motors tab, plug in your battery. Make sure your props are off. Props are always off. And click I understand the risks and slowly ramp up the voltage until all the motors are spinning. So now you can see each motor is spinning there. So pretty. And I'll just leave it spinning for now just to kind of show you what is going on. Um, and so I run, uh, there's a, so you can have your, so each of your motors spin opposite directions except for the corner. So this motor and this motor are supposed to spin one way and this motor and this motor are supposed to spin one way. And there's two uh, directions that you can do it and that's uh, props in or out. So personally I fly props out. So that means that the front two spin out away from the camera and the back two spin out away from the VTX. And so if we go and look at this, we can say motor, this is motor one, say one, and it's supposed to spin this way, meaning it's going to come around that way. Motor three is this one, and it's going to spin that way. 
Motor uh, 2 is up here in the front right corner. It's supposed to spin out and away. And then motor 4, which is that one, is going to also spin out and away, but the other direction. So we chose props out. So all you have to do is go in and just feel the motor. Is it spinning this way or this way? And I can feel that it's spinning it that direction. 2 is supposed to spin out that way, so I feel it, and it's pulling my finger around to the right. Motor 3 is supposed to be going down and around this way. And it's going the opposite direction. So we've got to reverse this motor. And then motor four is spinning out and around this way. So good, we only have to reverse one motor. Um, so what you can do is go ahead and slide that back down, turn off the checkbox, disconnect, and then switch over to um, BL Heli 32. Make sure that you have the right port, the USB modem, click connect. It'll think for a second and then go ahead and I should have unplugged my battery. Go ahead and plug your battery in. And you will hear that it doesn't go to the boop boop. So normally it goes do 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 do. There it just went do do do. And that's because BL Heli Suite has interrupted the flight controller's communication. So you're now communicating directly to the ESC. Click the check button. It'll read all four motors or all four ESCs really. Um, and then go ahead and right click on three. So three is the only one that we need to work on, and you can go into motor direction here, click it into reverse, right setup, and done. So typically, if you had all three, or if you had multiple motors that were spinning the wrong way, you would just right click on each of them, reverse the direction, right the setup. But since we only have one, we only have to do it once. Go ahead and disconnect. Um, and then connect to Betaflight. So let's put our controller on. So my radio is now on. We can check off that we reverse three. And let's go back to our motors and just make sure that they're all going the right, the right direction. So we'll start with one. One's good. Two. Two's good. Oop, that does not sound good. Three. Okay, three is now going this direction. And four. Four is still going the other direction. So we're good to go with that. We can get rid of these notes because we're all spinning the right way. And switch over to the ports tab. On the ports tab, you have two things that you need to set up. One is the uh, control for the DJI system, and that's Serial RX1. Um, and then your configuration slash MSP, that's the communication between the speed controller, or sorry, the flight controller and the um, uh, air unit. So they're set by default to the ones they are, which is Serial RX is UART 1, and UART 6 is the DJI air unit. Go into configuration, make sure that the serial based receiver is set up and that S bus is the chosen. Uh, receiver provider, save and reboot. And then go down into the CLI and type set SBUS BOD FAST equals on. Oh, I might have to reconnect. Set, oh, set SBUS BOD FAST equals on and save. So that's going to basically, so when we checked our goggles to make sure that we had the S bus baud rate fast on, we um, are now setting it in the flight controller to acknowledge that setting as well. So now if we go back in, go to receiver tab, you'll see that now our controller uh, responds to our input on the drone. Woohoo! <clears throat> okay, so... Then I'm gonna go into PID tuning. I'm gonna leave the PIDs alone for now. I'll share with you um, on my website, there'll be a link in the description below that has all of the commands, all sorts of products, all sorts of links, everything that you need to do to get this built. Um, but uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave the PIDs alone. I'm just gonna put my rates in. 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 
point eight point eight point eight. Save. That's just my freestyle rates, um, but I also think they'll work well for me for uh, Cine Whooping as well. Save. Um, so that sets our rates. Um, you can you'll have to fill around to f see what kind of rates you want to work with. Um, then we're going to go to the modes tab, and we're going to set our modes. So for me, aux one is where I want my arm, like that's on this shoulder here, for example. So when it's up, that's going to be arm, and when it's not up, it isn't. Um, I like to put a beeper on on uh, aux two, which for me is this shoulder. So when I go up, it beeps. Oh, no, that sucks. Okay, that sucks three. And then flip over after crash, I put on aux 2, which is this switch on mine, um, so that it reverses the motor direction. So save. And that should do it. So we can disconnect. And then I'm going to unplug the flight controller from the computer. And then I'm going to unplug both from this. Oh, one more setting. I forgot about one. So I'm going to plug this back in. Go away, Colin. On the configuration tab, because we are running reversed, you want to make sure that motor direction is reversed. Um, when it says reverse, what it means is props out. So because we set up our motors to spin this way, we want to make sure that we have the motor direction reverse on the computer. And since we installed the flight controller upside down, we have to just roll the, or we can pitch, pitch or roll the uh, board 180 degrees. So if we turn the accelerometer on, roll it 180 degrees, hit save and reboot, go back in, connect, on this uh, configuration tab, you can see that the drone is right side up now and it responds to everything that I tell it. Okay, so the rest of assembly is pretty dang straightforward. Um, I like to put the props on at this point because it's a little bit harder to put the props on once the ducts are on. So just look very carefully, make sure that you've got props out on the props. Out, 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 and out. And then prop nuts. And then prop tool. Okay, props are on. Now we can put the ducts on. And you can just see that there's one, two, three outside, two on the inside. Oh, just kidding. The these have to go underneath the antenna holder. So I gotta take my antenna holder off. I think I even mentioned that earlier. Put on the duct. And then put on the holder. Just make sure everything slid all the way down. Not too far on that one. Okay. And it's okay if they touch a little a little bit. If it's a lot of bit, um, you might have to just kind of turn the duct on the standoff a little bit. Um, but a little bit is okay. It'll kind of that's it's a self-solving problem. You'll see why. <laughs> and then uh, on the other side, our other duct. Oh, should have left that off. I find it helpful to just push everything on once, just a little bit. Freely. 
and boom. Now we're ready for the top plate. <clears throat> so for the top plate, just like that, I've got a little bit of Uma grip on there, which just helps hold everything in place um, with the battery. Not a requirement, but convenient. I do the back two of the top plate first. You can see that that starts to kind of bite on the air unit a little bit and just kind of squish it into place ever so slightly, which is great. So it'll keep everything from moving around. <clears throat> and then on the front side, we're going to use our GoPro mount. Um, I've got a couple little uh, washers that I add to just help uh, spread out the wear and tear on the mount. Sorry, this one. And then the battery strap goes in. And boom, now you've got a fully functioning Shendron Squirt Cine Whoop, ready to rock. Okay, with the Maiden Flight, I like to start with a little bit of line of sight, just to make sure everything is good to go. When I first do a build for the test for the Maiden Flight, I like to do a little bit of uh, line of sight flying. Um, so I'm going to just basically arm it, and I'm going to kind of wiggle it around on the ground and see, and make sure that it's responding to everything that it's supposed to. Sweet, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna throw on the goggles and uh, fly at FPV.
say that's good to go. Thank you so much for hanging out for this build guide. I'm really, really glad to have you guys be a part of it. Um, I think it turned out pretty dang well. Um, and uh, again, thank you for all your support. All of the links in the description help support this channel. More videos like this, the growth of the industry, all that stuff. Um, so if you uh, wouldn't mind using those links, if you choose to purchase some stuff uh, to build one of these, I would be very, very grateful. But uh, thanks for hanging out for this whole video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, frustrations, clairvoyances, whatever, leave them in the description below. Thank you so much. Stay flying.